Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy, a taco life for me, aka Senpai JD, here to bring you a brand new video. Today I'm doing a childhood trauma video, which is basically childhood trauma tag, which basically is me telling you what scared the shit out of me as a kid. <clears throat> uh, so from this, I'm going from the ages of three on to about twelve. Um. And I'll give you a few things that I was afraid of and things that like, helped me get over the fear later on. Uh, so I'll give you the first one. So at three, from three to seven, I was afraid of clowns. I had a core phobia so bad, it was pathetic. I Just simply seeing a clown, no matter if it was like a person in an co actual costume or like actual like a statue, would freak me the fuck out. I would go into panic modes. I would... Not want to be in a place if they had clowns. Um, so it was so bad that my actual grandfather used to get free tickets to the circus when I was younger because of the, his work. Um, you know, the Ringling Brothers, Bob Bailey's, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus growing up. And whenever the clowns would come out, I used to pass off my fear as his fear. And I used to say to him, like, you know, Papa, I know you're afraid of clowns, Papa. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the lobby. Come on, Papa. Let's go right now. The, I know you're afraid of clowns, Papa. Like, I was so, such a bitch that I could not e either admit I was afraid of clowns and everything. Um, <clears throat> another thing I was afraid, uh, I was afraid of was Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know why, it just, to this, again, it was, I think it was because the person in the costume and, you know, weird shit. Um, but... Yeah, I was such afraid of clowns. I, I still remember to this day. There was times where I like I, my dad used to have a restaurant before the restaurant he owns now, uh, called Johnny's Red Hot Ranch in Illinois. They used to have this parade to come around every year, and I would hide in the restaurant when clowns were coming. I would not want to be near clowns. It came down to one year. I was like seven years old, uh, and I remember it vividly. It was a parade. And there, it was one of those, it was at a parade where it wasn't like, we weren't at the restaurant, so there was no way of cover. I had, I could not run for cover. There was nowhere to fucking go. I, I tried hiding in between people. I tried hide, hiding in plain sight. None of it worked. And one, and my worst fear ended up happening. A clown came up to me and said, how you do, well, he said, how you doing, young, young man? Or he says, I think he says little boy or whatever. And I I just, I, he must have seen just the fear in my eyes. Uh, to be fair, I don't think I cried. I don't think I cried. I think I was just petrified and to like all that, all hell. And he said, and he, he kneeled down and he said, you don't have to be afraid. Not all, no, not all clowns are scared here or something like that. And he like, he pulled out a $5 bill and gave it to me and then walked, tussled my hair and walked away back into the parade. And for some reason, <laughs> I still laughing this shit because you all know I'm Jewish and you know the stereotype about Jews and how we like money. <laughs> I, I always say to people, I got over my fear in the most Jewish way possible. A clown gave me money, and therefore I'm like, oh, so you're not so scared anymore, man. You gave me money. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so I bet, yeah, so you're not scared anymore, man. Uh, you gave me some money. Uh, and not ever ends in that. I'm not afraid of clowns. Uh, they definitely annoy the crap out of me when they try to, like, even when they try to make you laugh when you don't want to laugh. That's the only time I'm like, and again, they don't, they don't, 
creep me out anymore. Like, I'll watch it, and I'll be like, yeah, it's fine. I have no problem watching it. I mean, the only time that I, I actually, I honestly say this. So, you know the movie Haunt Hell House LLC, the, the scenes with the clown? That's the only, and when I remember watching that movie, the first one specifically, and the scenes with the clown, it brought back my chlorophobia for about a quick minute. A quick minute, I was afraid of clowns again. I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, fuck that. I would have been through the door out. I would have been gone. I'm like, fuck your haunted house, buddy. I'm done. <laughs> you got walking ass clowns that are supposed to be ornaments? Hell no, bro. I'm out of this shit. But no, uh, I'm just no longer really afraid of clowns. They don't bother me anymore. Again, I find them more annoying now, but I still like clowns. Like, for fuck's sakes. The Joker is my, one of my favorite villains of all time. So, as you can tell, I got over my fear of clowns easily. Um, then going on from Chuck E. Cheese. It's not, I don't know why I was afraid of Chuck E. Cheese. I still don't know. I think it's the same reason for clowns. There was a distortion of, of, human, and of reality or humanity or whatever. It's an effect they call it. So, that's the reason why clowns are scary is because they don't match the perception of what we view as humanity. Like, you know, it's a painted on face. It's not their actual face. Well, the same thing goes with the Chuck E. Cheese. It's someone wearing a costume, but not the actual person. Uh, what I used to do for Chuck E. Cheese, though, is when I used to be a kid, my parents would take us there sometimes, and uh, the Chuck E. Cheese, the, the way they used to work it, I don't know if they still do this now, but even when you did have birthday parties, Chuck E. Cheese would come out, and he would go to, like, let's say you had a party table. He'd go to the party table first, and then afterwards... He would visit individual tables with children. So when I would see Chuck E. Cheese coming to get to, get to me. Uh, by the way, at age 7 I was watching radar horror films. I don't know how I was able to watch radar horror films and still be afraid of shit. But I was. Just weird, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was afraid of some shit. Anyways, uh... Around that, so yeah, seven years old, and, where was I at? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So, Charlie E. Cheese would come out, and he would go and visit the individual tables. I don't know why, for any reason, I had no idea why, uh, Chuck E. Cheese would, uh, but, do this. It, it was, but anyways, when I would see him coming, I would hide underneath the table, so when he, and wait until he'd skip me, Right? So one day, so around seven or and a half years old, I, we were actually cheese, and I did it. And my dad got really pissed and said, this is not how, I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. And my dad, actually cheese, had already passed me, grabbed me, picked me up, pulled me out from under the table, or pulled me out from under the table, picked me up, pulled me to Chuck E. Cheese himself, pushed me to him, and I bumped into him. And again, I'm seven, so I'm like, like, I'm like not, I like down to here, bro. I'm like not, I'm small as fuck. Okay, I'm like at least four or five, four feet something. Okay, and this dude is towering. He must have been six foot. I, I'm telling you, and I'm just looking up in terror. And all of us, uh, the dudes, like, the dude just staring at me and tries to give, wants to give me a high five. And at first, I don't do that. And then the dude's like puts a fist bump out and he says, hey, little man, ain't nothing to be scared of. And I hear a human voice and it's like a, well, it could have been like an 18 year old dude for, for all I know inside the cost, costume. And I'm like, oh shit, you're, you're a dude. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He's like, and he's like, yeah, but I'm like, in my mind, like, oh shit, it's a dude in a costume. And then I fist bump him and then that was it. And end of my fear of Chuck E. Cheese. But before that, let me go back before that a little bit. So now six and a half. Six and a half, I was, when I was a kid, uh, around six and a half, I had a, I had start, or six, when I was six, I started watching Goosebumps, okay? I rented every VHS tape that my library had to offer. Then when I was six and a half, when I, when I was around, almost seven years old, I rented Nilo and Nilo and Nilo and Haunted Mask 2. Uh, I was an idiot. I'll admit it. I watched the episode at night. Total dark out. There is no there is no one else in the house. Well, there is no one in the house. 
but uh, I'm watching it with no one else but my dad. And my dad's passed out on the on the couch across from me. So if I got scared, he's not going to do shit because he's asleep. <laughs> like, I remember watching this, and my dad's a snorer. He snores very fucking loud. And I remember watching, I was watching Scooby-Doo first. I watched Scooby-Doo. I think it was the one with uh, the, the Snow Ghost. And I forgot the other episode was involved. But it was that VHS. And then I put in Haunted Mask 2. And I remember perfectly the combination of fear on my face and my dad snoring in the background. And I don't know why I was so scared of this episode to this day. I don't know why. I, I think it had to do with the effect of the old man mask and the fact that someone could... That that could happen. Like, even though it couldn't happen, but, like, it might happen. And not to mention the old man mask kind of looked like it was, like, I'm like... I'm looking at my dad, and I'm like, maybe that will be my dad when he's older. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, I don't want that for my dad. My dad's a good guy. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyways, so that would scare the shit out of me, and I would, I would refuse to <clears throat> look at the VHS. Like, if I looked at the VHS, I would go into a straight panic. It, I actually f it forced my mom and... I forced my mom to take me to the to take it to the library a week before it was supposed to be due. Like it wasn't even like I had this shit for two weeks. Okay, this shit was for two weeks, and I it it, it was like no, you don't understand. I can't have this VHS in the house for two weeks. It needs to be gone tomorrow. So my mom's like, okay, okay, we'll take it back. But I am not going by myself. It was you rented it with your library card. You're going with me. And I'm like, fine. So I went in it, but I, I made her like promise. Like, yo, I'll go with you. But there is no way I am looking at that tape. That tape better be covered up in the fuck in the car while we're going to the library. She said, fine. So it was me, my bubby, and my mom. And we took the tape. We took the tape back to the library. I remember it like it was yesterday. I go into the library. Uh, I'm handing back the tape and the lady says, and I quote, why do you want to, like, she was the one who's actually the same lady who checked it out for me in the first place. It says, why are you handing it back? It's, you still have two weeks with it. And she says, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> and I said, and I, she said, and I quote, you do know the shit's for children of seven years age and over, right? I only rented it to you because you're a patron. You and your family are patrons to this library, and like I thought you could handle it. And I'm like, oh well, that would have been good to know because they didn't actually have a rating on the VHS when I was when I was at the place. Be conveniently, because the thing that the barcode they would they would use to scan it out for you was covering the rating VHS tape, so. Which I found out later on in that in life when I went to the same library to go get VHS a long time ago later, because for a while in my when I had my old t old room, um in Illinois, my TV was a had a combo DVD VHS player, as well, and then as uh as its thing minus, and then also regular TV. It's also a very like it was like a twenty, it was like one of those. 15, 16 inch cube TVs, like you know those. It, it wasn't a flat screen. I didn't get my flat screen TV until I was in high school. It was in my room. Um, that was a 32 inch though. And I later upgraded to a 42 inch later on like, in college. <clears throat> Anyways, where was I at? Oh yeah. So then fast forwarding a little to sixth grade, uh, no sixth grade, fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. So fifth grade, I remember we would have like in between science and history we would have like free time and we had like six computers in class that we could use and this is before my my webs like websites like youtube were blocked on when i was this grade youtube was just starting out i think it was like 2000 and fifth grade when I was, youtube was just starting out for a while give or take and uh I remember we were on a computer, and this is you could watch Goosebumps on the computer. Like they had it on YouTube a lot. So me and my friends were uh, were sitting around, and we're like, "What should we do? What should we do?" 
And my friends are like, let's watch Goosebumps. And I'm like, yeah, yeah let's do that. But let's not watch, I, I used to say to people, like, do not watch Haunted Mass 2. It's terrifying and it's like, you will never sleep again. <laughs> And people, and my friends, like, bullshit, it's not that scary, bro. And I'm like, dude, no, it's scary. And then finally my friend said to me, he's like, listen, I'll make you a deal. You give up, uh, we'll watch Harm Ass 2. We'll watch it right now, okay? And if you get scared, we'll turn it off. But if you watch it in the end of the movie, end, by the end of the episode, you like it, you owe me $5. And I'm like, sure, fine, whatever. Uh, well, I gave him five dollars by the end of that episode because I ended up liking the episode. I'm like, I don't know what's, what's so scary about this now, uh, because at that point I thought, like, okay, this is just weird and corny in some levels. But uh, yeah, I mean, not corny, but like funny. Anyways, uh, moving forward to around middle school or junior high school, when I was a seventh grader. Was it 7th or 8th? No, it was 7th. It was 7th. I remember it was being 7th. When I was a 7th grader, I had gone off a medication that was for my ADHD. It was a medication that was considered like cocaine or a crack. It was for my medication. medication. So I went, and I, instead of weaning me off it like normal, it was, by the way, it's not, wasn't, it wasn't cocaine or crack, but it was, it was called, uh... Either it was Risperdal or something like that. Either it was one that it was either Risperdal or something. I don't remember. Um, it was I think it was Ritalin. I think it was Ritalin. Um, the reason why I was taking off it was because they said prolonged use of Ritalin and the pill I was using showed early signs of people getting cancer. So my parents were like, "Yeah, we're not we're not fucking with you getting cancer. Let's get you off it." My psychi my psychiatrist said, "Okay, let's get him off it." problem with that was instead of weaning me off it they just yanked it out from under me so i went through withdrawal which was the living most living hell i've ever experienced in my life could not fall asleep i had shivers i had shakes i had hallucinations from lack of sleep um so bad that i would i once looked at my brother my little brother was like i think like seven or eight six or seven at the time and i would sleep in his room to calm down and I remember, is it cl clear? I looked at my brother one night, and I couldn't, I was one of those nights where I was falling asleep. And I know it was a hallucination now, but when I didn't, I saw his face melting, like fucking melting. And I started to cry, like in, uncontrollably cry. And I grabbed him and hugged him, and he's like, what the fuck's wrong? <laughs> he didn't say that, but he was like, what, what's wrong? And I said, stop melting, don't die. Um... I had like a freak out. I had a break from reality when I went to. <clears throat> I had a break from reality when I went to. Uh, it was supposed to be a fun for me because I love Harry Potter, um, and the science and the uh, sorry the Chicago Science and Industry Museum at the time I was at this time had an exhibit for all the Harry Potter films. They had all the props and stuff, and I was going through. And I even got sorted. The time I got sorted into Slytherin, uh, which I was happy about, or not somewhat happy about, but I wasn't because of like, oh shit, I wanted to be Gryffindor, but whatever. Um, anyways, I'm going through the thing, and I and I remember we got to the dark arts part of it, like all the stuff from the dark arts, and there was Voldemort, a statue of Voldemort at the end. And for some reason, when I saw the statue of Voldemort, my, my, my mind broke from reality. And I had this, like, either you call it a vision or a hallucination that Voldemort, like, the Voldemort statue came to life and started fucking, you know, f destroying everyone in the, in the room and killing people and killing people. And here's, like, uh, what, I must have been, like, 13, 13 year old me. Remembering spells from the books I've read, and in my this is all in my head, by the way. It's like not reality, and I'm shooting off or trying to protect family and like family people, like other spells, bro. It was I, I look, I told you, I'm telling you now. I look back at it now, and I'm like, I I was fucked. I was not doing well mentally at that point because of the withdrawal. Anyways, I started freaking the fuck out, and my mom noticed, and like she told my family, like we're gonna go to this other area. 
We'll meet with you back up. So I remember like it yesterday, my mom got me a paper bag and I told me to breathe into the paper bag. I'm freaking out. So I'm also hyperventilating. And I remember like I'm starting to calm down and my dad and my brother and I think it was my sister. I don't remember. My uncle and my grandmother and my grandfather are walking back to get catching him back up to us at this like little, it was like a, it was a Khufu court basically in the museum. And I remember like, I feel like, I remember like, I just want to go home. Is what I said. I just want to go home. So they're like, okay. Anyways, I got better. Stopped happening, and uh, uh, that was the trauma that happened to me then. Um, not much trauma that I experienced before, leading up to after that, up until I was ten. So when I was ten years old, oh, wait, going back real quick. So going back to when I was ten years old, um, I remember being down here visiting my grandparents, grandparents in Florida. Before I moved to Florida, eventually, uh, I would visit at their house. And I remember I picked on a movie. My, again, I liked watching horror films at a very young age. So I picked on the movie. It said Captivity. Uh, and I clicked on it, and I watched it. And I got to about a good 20 minutes into the movie, and I knelt the fuck out. It was that, it traumatized me so much. And I'll tell you what the, basically the basic plot line is. In Captivity, uh, this very rich... Uh, I think it's like a actress slash beauty star uh, is kidnapped by supposedly a fan of hers, and then is tortures her relentlessly over her beauty and how she's like not thankful for being the where she is in life and blah 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 blah, and then she's a whore and stuff. Uh, and like he, I think on my memory culture, he like pulled like he. Break, broke her fingers at one scene. He, uh, he made her, he mushed up, uh, maggots and worms and stuff in a blender and then made her, made her drink it, forced her to drink it. Uh, she, or he, uh, I think she even made him eat someone. I don't remember. I, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. Uh, but, I do remember, I did, and then when I was 12 years old, I rewatched the movie. I was able to rewatch it. And I wasn't scared anymore because I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and it has actually has a happy ending. Like, she ends up getting, killing the guy and getting free. Um, but, like, think of captivity if you mix Saw and mixed uh, Hostel, but only target, the only person that's targeting one person the entire film, and that's it. Um, but, anyways. That's my childhood trauma tag. That's one of the things I was afraid of as a kid. Uh, later on in life, I get a fear of alien abduction from watching a bunch of stuff about aliens and stuff. Like, I don't want to be abducted by aliens, but um, really, that's it. So, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And I like to nominate people for this tag real quick. I'm, want, I'm throwing down the gauntlet, uh, Bumps in the Night. Uh, Zach Baby TV or Campfire Tales, uh, Austin or uh, Viewer Beware. Sorry, um, give us one of our honesty fan as well as, <clears throat> um, Good Ones Completionist. I am throwing it out on Gallant. You tell me what you saw, what your childhood trauma was, and tag, do your tra own childhood trauma tag soon. Thank you all for watching and peace. Yeah. 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 I said, eh, eh. I said, eh, eh, eh. Whoa. First, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I got sooty girls riding on my dick like a horse. But figmas, I'm figmas. These people can't stop me. 2D girls fucking be sent by new hobby. Pull the pants to off the ship. Be a wife who I'm the king of this shit. Wife who's rocking from the nation just to come hear me spit. Got the 2D game unlocked. If you ain't about this,